<clears throat> Hopefully everything is set up to go. Let me just get into the game again. We are changing it up and playing No Man's Sky to do something a little bit different. And because one of my buddies was interested in it and wanted to see some gameplay, so I'm starting like 20 minutes earlier than I said I wanted. I was going to, but I kind of want to play. And full disclosure, I have not streamed this game ever. I don't know how it's going to perform while I'm streaming. It's a learning experience. Get up. So. Right now we're kind of just going to screw around and remember the controls again because I haven't played this in many months. We're probably going to make a fresh save about half an hour, 45 minutes or so when that uh, grouchy Eskimo shows up, if she does. Show her some early on gameplay, but... This is my uh, home base that we're at. I think I called it Pathfinder or something stupid like that. Our solar arrays over here. Whatever this crab thing is, I named this one Phil. I think that's Phil, it could be a different one for all I know. Got the uh, Star Chaser, because I'm so vain I name my ship after myself. My Twitter name Star Chaser. And the car. Love the car. Things are fun to drift on. If anyone thinks the stream looks like shit, feel free to let me know. Like I said, I have not streamed this game before. Right now we're kind of just screwing off. Remembering what the controls are and then we'll do something interesting. So we'll uh, put the car back. I don't want the car. We're also just on standard graphics settings, not whatever I had it on before, because I realized it wasn't liking that when I tried to have the stream software on and do higher graphics settings, because I guess that's just what my... Uh, computer doesn't like, so hopefully this is good. Let's see, let's actually let's see what we got going on in our inventory. Do we have anything I don't need? Probably I've got a lot of stuff I don't need. The freighter has nothing of interest. Nothing at all on there. Actually, while I'm thinking about it, let's... That's not my base, what is that? What do we have here? What? And you guys saw that too, right? Was there something under the water that wasn't rendered, or... I don't know what's... It looked like there was something interesting, so I want to check that out. Oh, I need to invest in a submarine, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure where I'm supposed to be looking for that, so... I guess we'll just forget about that and... Make my way back up to my ship.
Here's my, uh... Recharge my life support. Put some oxygen in there. Any more oxygen? No. Alright, well, we're, we're going back to the outpost for a minute. And that's gonna take longer than I care to fly. So we are going to pop up into space. Cut the brakes and steer ourselves so that we're going right down. No point letting the atmosphere slow us down. Come on, give me some speed. You can do it. There we go. Cut the brakes and hit the landing pad. Where's my teleporter at? Have I not put a teleporter in this base yet? I might not have. It was under construction when I last played, so... It's probably missing all sorts of stuff that would be nice to have. Frost warts coming along. Yeah, we have to go up to space anyway, because I don't have a teleporter. radar on our cockpit and steer ourselves for the space station. Go initiate landing sequence. cut that shit out. I do that way too much. Part of me thinks I coughed out my nicotine, so maybe I need more. I think that's how that stuff works. Let's see, we want the uh, India, Indium Outpost Alpha. Because I'm streaming, it's taking slightly longer than usual to teleport me where I want to go. If you can't hear, I'm sorry. I'm being deafened by that myself. But, uh... Activated Indium is only on like specific horrible planets that are absolutely gross and that little red bar where it says storm and that's my uh, hazard protection that drops super quickly on these planets if I end up in a uh, severe storm We are going to pop over to the space station. That storm is keeping my ship from getting power. So I can't use the, I can't use the teleporter that I have on hand. I don't care about the trader. They have crap when they are in their ships like that. Uh, 
I think I have just enough power to run that place, but not set up like surplus. Then when you figure in the storms, my batteries end up just draining anyway, so... I think it's like a 50-50 ch uh, shot if I can use my uh, stuff at all when I get there. Alright, so let's head on back to... Grab that. Get in my ship so I don't die of like weather or something. And I am going to mute the microphone because it looked like I missed a kind of important call that I need. So I will be back in just a moment.
Alright, that took a little bit longer than I thought it would because I was stuck on hold waiting for somebody to talk to me, but that is that phone call is all taken care of and we can get back to streaming. What was I doing? I don't remember. Right, I have all these stacks of activated indium now. So we're just gonna launch up into space. I need to get a little farther away from the planet to, uh... I don't know, this Why can't I warp my freighter here? I'm away from the planet. Give me my... Go farther away, can I get my freighter? Huh. Why can't I have my freighter? Unless they change something and I can't just warp it willy nilly now. Okay, so we'll just we'll just go back to the uh, system that my outpost is on. What's a scrap opportunity? I d I haven't played this in a while. I don't know what that is. Purchase purchaser wares with tainted metal found aboard derelicts. Okay. I do know where the derelicts are, kind of. I've looked at those before. I just don't know what a scrap dealer does, so... What outpost is that? Or what's it? I guess it doesn't matter what system it's at, I'll just go there and... My ship is just right up in orbit. Oh! I, I forgot the back on my chair broke watching a stream the other day, so it like... Like the way the chair sits like this, the hingy part that like lets it adjust like this. For your like back and stuff. That's messed up. It doesn't hold itself up if I lean back on it, so it's basically permanent. Grouchy Eskimo would be so proud. It's basically permanent posture check sit up straight like this because I can't just lean back and slouch in my chair anymore because it broke. But it's my fault for getting the cheapest darn chair I could find. I might get a little bit of spending money here in a couple weeks. I might have to go, uh... I'm cheap. I'm not going to go super expensive, but I'm going to go less cheap. That's for sure. Less cheap. Where's my ship? There we go. I swear this thing's so big it could probably cast a shadow over the whole state of New York. Or at the very least, Manhattan. Am I close enough to trade with the ship, or do I have to be on board? I think I have to be on board the ship. Space Vessel Queen of the Night. Because it was a black ship and it seemed cool. So... I want that to go on my freighter. That goes on the freighter, and that goes on the freighter. It can all go down here where I can conveniently see it all. Cause I'm not, a I'm not actually gonna sell this or refine it or anything. I'm just holding it for right now. Got a, and stuff's worth a little bit of cash. Why is the uh, price changing? 
I, uh, well, I assume that's as the economy changes, maybe, in the uh, system. We're looking at millions of dollars here. That's why I've got way up here in the corner. Over $300 million because I've been, I've been farming activated indium a lot at a time. Guess we can do a quick ship tour if the stream's still looking okay. We are just screwing off filling time right now waiting on someone. So like there's the uh, Star Chaser, that's my biggest of my small ships, so it tells you how big this ship's gotta be. Ooh, I must have bought that like right before I stopped playing because I don't remember that ship. It's a fancy looking ship. Does it have a... Uh, it's got junk on it. But it does have a kind of cool look. And that is... Cleona, my very first ship that I bought that was not my generic red bucket. And it's got crap on it. Not a very good looking ship. But I like it, because it was my first ship that I bought. Oh, I'm doing good, Katie. G good of you to pop in. I'm just filling time remembering controls on my uh, really well-off save. I was waiting on you to do the uh, new game and play from the beginning so you can see some of that stuff. Right now we're looking at my really, really big ship that's like... This will probably cast a shadow over half of Michigan. Let's see if we step up to the bridge. Maybe we can get a good view outside if the light's cooperating with us. Yeah, it kind of stretches way past whatever these bulbs here are in the distance. It's a big ship. I just need to, uh... I don't have a save checkpoint, so I need to find a ship and pop in and out of the ship, and that'll force the game to save real fast. Because you can't just save in the menu so far so far as I'm aware. I can't just save in the menu. You, know, you have to get in and out of a ship. <laughs> you like big ships and can No, don't worry, this is a big ship. I mean, you saw me standing next to uh, this ship. Let's uh What am I looking for? Utility switch starship view. Alright, so here's the outside of my big ship that like towered over my guy. Let's do a quick little outside flight pattern over this ship. So we can see how big this is. Whoops. Ugh. It is so weird to fly. I, I never fly in third person. I fly first person. So this is really awkward for me. Yeah, it's pretty big. Pretty big. This was a really expensive ship. This was like my life's work saving up to get this ship, basically. It's big and black and nice looking and... Like I said, I'm pretty sure half of Michigan would be put under a shadow if this thing was in low, low orbit around our place. Let's get my view that I like back. Yeah, this thing cost me several hundred million dollars, I'm not gonna lie. And then here's my little astronaut robot guy standing next to my hauler that I was in. So there, there's a little bit of perspective for ya. Let's see, we'll go mode select, save the game, 
or we already saved the game, we're quitting out of the game. But we can start a new game. Show you a little bit of early gameplay. Uh, these are like your mode options. We have uh, normal, it was just regular how you experience it. You have know, creative, you know. There's no cost to stuff. You don't take damage. You're just there to explore. Survival, like I said, there's more hazards, inventory smaller, stuff's more expensive, and there is permadeath. Where everything's wiped out on start. I'm interested in trying a permadeath one, but I guess for for the sake of you are curious what the game's about, we're gonna start a new uh just a regular normal difficulty. And probably play the game for... I have to grab my iPhone and look at the time. Probably about an hour and a half or so we can play. I've got stuff to do about 1 o'clock. I can try permadeath right now if you'd like. I was I was going normal to show you... Uh, I mean, I, I guess the initial game experience would basically be the same. It's just my experience would be a little bit harder than if you were doing it on normal. Yeah, maybe save it for later. That's a good idea. So when you start the game, we're just waking up on Whichever planet we're on, like I said, our our suits are on board not diagnostic. It's like, oh, this is damaged. That's damaged. So, like, basically, the first like little while on we're gonna be on this planet. Uh, yeah, skip that. I don't care where we're at. So, basically, for this next little bit, we're going to be start pop start popping me up some uh. Class, what? There we go. Exosuit guidance. Perform a scan to find sodium. I cannot scan because I need ferrite dust. So we have to gather ferrite dust. Which you know, you just mouse your cursor over stuff like this, and it tells you uh what it is. This is all stuff with cobalt. Yeah. That can get out of my way. I know what I'm doing. Oh, we get ferrite dust. What is that? Humming. Twenty-seven out of twenty-five. You can also scan these things for credits and to learn what the other resource is, where it says analyze, but. Our scanner's broken, so can't really do that. Right, repair the scanner. Repair the scanner. Now I need sodium because my hazard protection is basically about to go out on me. And here soon I'm taking health damage. That's the little bar on top that's almost gone. Is That's your hazard protection. And right now this is a kind of poisonous plant, so... Alright, take that, recharge, recharge. We got a little bit of time now while we scan and find some more sodium. Basically, this is how the startup is. It's like, it's telling us what to do to, uh, repair our stuff, get ourselves going, and then once we're off whatever planet we're thrown on top of, we can get going and just do what we want. Alright, so, now they want us to, uh... Alright, we gotta go over here. I need to keep scanning and looking for, like, oxygen-rich plants to supplement my life support. 
sodium rich plants like I need to get used to I have to keep on top of that stuff cuz I've I've played my other uh save so much that I basically don't worry about that anymore. But since we're playing it from the start to show you a cool game, I need to keep on top of that cuz my stuff's draining faster than normal. I and mean, not that this is bad. I mean, we still have probably like 4 or 5 minutes of time maybe five or six even to uh, run out our hazard support and we just picked up a bunch of plants I'm not worried about that Actually, we've got another one over here too it's not out of our way we might as well grab that It's a little more interesting after a while than running around looking for resources. But now that we woke up, we have to find our ship, reunite with that, and get it repaired and flight-worthy again so we can get out of this uh, planet. And Our mysterious signal source is right here. That's our ship. It's a little worse for wear. It's kind of sparking over here. Distress beacon. Boundary separation failure likely. Sentient intervention. Uh, fresh iteration generated. Uh, broadcast received. Investigate the crash ship. Now that we're in our ship, it will diagnose itself and tell us what exactly is wrong. The whole atlas and boundary anomaly, all that stuff. There, There is a, sto a story of a sort that you can follow along and do at your own leisure. But you're under no real obligation to do it. I probably played the game 200 hours before I even tried getting halfway into that story and I still haven't finished it. So if I connect the exosuit... Uh... I mean, it's, it's not that it's a long story, it's just that I didn't want to do it, so... Right, so our... Pulse engine critically damaged, and our launch thrusters are damaged. Hermetic seals. So we exit. We need metal plating and hermetic seals for that. So we need a lot more ferrite dust to craft our metal plates. I think these were ferrite dust rocks over here. Yeah. That is what we need. And there's a geode that I honestly don't know what you do with. I just sell those. Oh, it says, I guess it's saying here, analyze it with the X button. X button, because I'm playing with a controller. Flying games are weird with mice and keyboards and stuff, so... And we have more than enough ferrite dust for metal plates, so... come up to our ship. We should be close enough. Right, that's repaired. Now we need... Board the... Oh, it wants me to board the ship every single time.
Salvage planetary chart from distress beacon cache. Alright. Salvage that planetary chart. Oh, you're already hooked and we've been running around fixing the ship. We haven't even launched into space yet. Oh, that's good that you're interested. It's a very fun game. Oh, I have to open the inventory. This must be different. I seem to remember not having to open that. I kind of expected it would just tell me what way to go, like when I first played. Oh, and at those big space stations where I, uh, where I was flying around earlier, if you saw that, where you do trading and can pick up quests and stuff. You can change the appearance of your guy, like I had the purple suit with the uh, big bug robot looking eye things. You don't have to be an orange astronaut like this. It's a big plan. So we have 15 oxygen. I guess we're doing okay. We're we're not sprinting and making it go down faster. That's why we're going at a jogging speed. Cause you notice now we have double arrows next to the white bar on the bottom because we're sprinting. Oh great, toxic storm. Our hazard protection is going to suck, but we are not going that much farther. Like, one of those U's is about a meter, so... We're talking like 500 meters, so it's probably just over this hill over here, so... Our suit's going down a little faster, but it's not like a horribly dangerous planet to be on, so... We should be able to keep up with our stuff just with the nitrogen we have on our inventory. And since I don't have much oxygen for the life support. This is taking a while because I'm jogging instead of going faster. Oh yeah, there is a rainbow. I didn't notice that until you mentioned it. Although I imagine that would be a kind of ugly rainbow. I mean the planet is all green and poisonous and stuff. I haven't even... S oh, now our stuff's really going down on us no oh we we no we have buildings here we can shelter in until the uh storm's gone so maybe we will jetpack and burn our uh, life support to get there faster because this ain't a friendly place Where's my thing? Oh, here's my thing. Yeah, leaving behind on the fabricator might be able to use visor damage, can't find ship. Sounds kind of like me. Visor damage, can't find ship. Uh, Is it still, uh... Alright, so the storm is clearing at least, so... Alright. Is 
that a thing? Oh, I found something. I got something. carbon nanotubes so we need to gather carbon and this weird looking tree has carbon so that's excellent okay multi-tool oh I wait I need to make the uh Turns out I need to use the carbon that I got to make the thing that has to go in the thing. I can't put the carbon directly into my little gun here. Alright, so our ship's way over there, but now we can scan and look at stuff. So we can, like, right trigger scan this. We get a small bit of money. And if we, like, upload this information to a... Uh, whatever it's called uh, anyway, if we go to our catalog or which is it oh discoveries they moved everything around but anyway we get more credits if we upload all this to online but the cool thing about this game Katie is it's totally it's totally a single player experience if you want it to be but there are like trillions and trillions and trillions of procedurally generated planets like this and different like there are so many planets I expect that in all of the world all of the time that everyone has to play this before technology just doesn't support this game and it gets old like Oregon Trail and other 90s games you're not going to discover everything there are still going to be planets where somebody will be making first contact 20 years from now oh, that's neat, what's, what's the growing thing? I don't know what the glowing thing is. I don't think I've seen a jade pea before. I'm gonna go touch it. So what is a jade pea? Uh, oh, processing nutrient. All right, so it's just it's just glowing food. Well, it's kind of neat, glowing food. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe more than trillions. I don't remember the exact number, but it's a big number. W once I finished the, uh, yeah, it's, it's just glowing food. It's just glowing peas. But once we get this ship up into space, I can open the uh, galaxy map and I can show you stuff. Let's see, maybe there's some more glowing peas. Uh, so there are jade peas uh, over there if you missed what they are, but those are way over there. Uh, yeah, I've, I have no idea. Maybe those peas are glowing because they're radioactive from being on a poison planet. Maybe they're... Uh, Maybe they're totally fine and they just glow because it's a weird alien planet. That was a little harder of a drop than I meant. Yeah, life support we just have to find oxygen for, but luckily since our ship is a... Uh, it protects us from the outside environment, so... Hazard protection can just rest and recharge on its own. Alright, so the uh, pulse engine's repaired. Now we 
need to do the launch thruster. Which isn't going to be hard to do at all. Oh, sweet. Oxygen rich plants. I Was there something near I feel like something was nearby and it like disturbed the camera on me. Oh. So we need all the dihydrogen. Maybe not all of it, but in addition to uh, helping us fix our launch thrusters, the stuff is used for fuel as well, so... We're, we're gonna need a lot of it. Cause we gotta make jelly to, uh... I guess it's meant to be like a grease or a lubricant for something on the ship, I suppose. Oh, that's a big one. I need a way nicer laser than I got. Let me scan. Oh, the scanner takes so long to recharge compared to my current one. I need dihydrogen. Dihydrogen. There's not an ounce of dihydrogen nearby, and that is frustrating. Like other places, it feels like that stuff's basically like candy. Oh, I didn't notice your runaway message. Alright, see you later. I was too busy focused on finding dihydrogen. Dihydrogen, there we go. We've got more than enough now, so there's our dihydrogen. We need oxygen and metal plates so we can make a refiner. I know for sure we're going to need the refiner at some point with regard to building the ship back up, so we'll just make it ourselves, take the initiative here. Life support is getting low from all the running around. Let's pop in, lube up the, uh, lube up the thing we have to lube up. And I need that carbon so we can refine ferrite. Oh. oh, they're falling little green things. What are they? Oh, I can get to have them. have to play catch up a little bit because we need carbon both to recharge our mining laser we've been using and we need it for the uh, refiner oh what's what's for food I haven't eaten food yet Actually, yesterday, the only food I ate was that quesadilla I mentioned having in, uh... I want to say I was watching Peachy's stream, but... Yesterday, I made one quesadilla, and that's the only food I've had. The so food sounds good. Uh, 
Oh, you lost me at oatmeal. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a big oatmeal eater. Not a big oatmeal eater. Right, we can stop. We don't need that much. It's just wasting our time. Oh, we probably break that down as well. Uh, the only times I eat oatmeal are when I'm, uh... I'm not gonna be honest, I load mine up with so much milk and sugar that it's no, there's no way it's healthy at that point. Oh, oh good, we can launch now. We can go into space for the first time. Here's our system that we're in popping up. First contact, like I said, so many darn planets, there's no way to uh, check them all out. So here's our galaxy map. Uh, it's got an arrow setting up, because right now it says up in the top center it's trying to point us towards the galactic core. But if we break off all of that, like... Every single star here, I am not lying to you. We can go way far out for light years and light years and light years. I could spend, honestly, I could spend many, many weeks just holding this thumbstick like this going forward. Every single star that they put in the sky, you can go to. Some of them are harder to get to than others because... Well, well, first off, it's warning me I don't have a hyperdrive installed, so I can't travel at all. But, like, some of these, like, red stars, blue stars, like, like so, some of these different colored stars, you need, like, specific technology installed to, uh, do it. But, yeah, you know, like, th this place is so big, and I, after spinning the camera around like this, I don't even rem I don't even remember where we are in relation to the galaxy. Like, the big bright light is the, uh, galactic core in the center. But, actually, you can see in the left where it shows the galaxy map, says galactic core for this galaxy. Right now, we are... 721,957 light years away from from the core from the perspective of where the camera's at and I've already been flying the camera around a lot I guess we're only 718,000 I guess I was going the wrong way when I was going like that but Yeah, it's it's a very fun game. Very very fun. Like I'll be entirely honest with you. Pause the game, get rid of the ship noise like I told you I tell you the stuff I like, the stuff I don't like. Like it is very fun having this many uh planets. Like they all do have something special about them. Like, there's always going to be something interesting where it's like, well, that's kind of interesting. But when you've got this many planets being procedurally generated by, like, 30 gigabytes of code, you're going to start seeing a lot of the same stuff. Like, I saw those jade peas and I saw a couple interesting looking shaped trees and animals. But this poison pl poisonous planet is not really significantly different than other poisonous planets. Like, like all the animals are like the same basic skeleton shape. It's just the code will distort it. Like, maybe the arms on one will be super short and super long on a different. Maybe the back will be shaped funny on a different planet. Like, they all look different. They're all technically unique, but. I mean, when you're playing it for the first, like, couple hundred hours, everything looks cool and interesting and different, but when you've played it as much as I have, you start to see the uh, shortcomings to procedural generation, and that a lot of stuff starts to end up exactly the same. 
But it's still a fun game, especially to play with friends. Incoming transmission. Uh, honestly, I don't care. This, this is just starting... Uh, this is starting the story I'm not going to do. Yeah, that was an early complaint, and they've added a lot of stuff that makes the game way better, especially how the worlds look. But at the end of the day, they still basically plugged in a seed, a string of numbers, into their generation code. So this is the seed we want for the galaxy, and then it just procedurally generated everything so like so things are a lot better it's a lot more unique than it was even two years ago when I started playing it a couple years after it came out but there's still only so much you can do with procedural generation but it's still a fun game anyway I don't play it as much as I used to play it, but I play it quite a lot. Actually, I guess we should do some of these uh, quests, at least until we can leave the uh, system, because we're learning how to leave the system, and we have to get the blueprints and stuff, so... We're back at the same planet we're at. We didn't go anywhere, we just went up into space so we can loop around. Hey, we're flying through that rainbow. No, the rainbow's taken off on us. Oh well. Huh. What do we have here? Like I said, with with updates and the, like, especially because they're it's like their little baby, and even though they fucked it up so bad the first time, they're still trying to do stuff with it. But this is something I've never seen before. I have never seen a building this big in all my time playing the game. So to hell with finding the signal and fixing our ship. I want to see what this is. Looks like some kind of trading area, but what's inside the building? Planetary Archive. Is there a way to go up? Or is this the only place I can go? Because this is a really damn big building and I want to see it. Are these are these just holographic geck heads it looks like yeah th this has to be from an update because I have never seen anything like this before and I've played the game so much that I was just saying it you need the updates and stuff because there's only so much procedural generation can do so and it looks like it's just a big fancy trading center of some kind Well, that's what I like about this game. They are still adding stuff. They are trying to make it what it was promised to be and then better. And this is just case in point. Six months ago, I would have never seen that. I would have never had all those people I can trade with just sitting on a planet. I'm going to set up a little flyby pattern and get a better look at this building because that's so cool. This will probably never work, but I wonder if I can park on top of one of those struts and stand on top. Oh, there's no way that's wide enough. This is probably never going to work. I 
ending sequence unavailable, I thought so. Yeah, I don't think it'll let me, even if, even if I line it up straight, I don't think it'll let me. Let's do a barrel roll. But I'm gonna try. I'm gonna give it one more try, because I do want to stand on top of this and look down. If it'll let me line her up, line her up. No, I just can't land on top of a building. Nope. That isn't where I wanted to park. Actually, I'll just put me right here. I don't need fuel to launch from a launch pad, and I just used up my fuel. Yeah, that is so cool. Uh, I need to take a screenshot and send this to my buddy that I play the game with. How far back is the camera going to let me go? Because this is a pretty big beast to put into frame. I might have to just go stupidly low and... But I still need to be some kind of distance away, I think. I mean, landing sequence unavailable. I don't care, I want you to land. Land. Land the ship. Do I have to break a tree to make landing room? As I flew in so fast that it's trying to generate all the uh, plants and stuff so it thinks it's not safe to land. But I've landed in rough before, so... I've landed in rougher before, I should say. There we go. Oh, what effects can I adjust? I did not know there were effects. Fog density, cloud level, lens, neat, there's a lot of stuff to this. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, it looks like they've updated it since the last time I really played, so there's a lot of uh, stuff I'm not so familiar with here, but this is pretty neat. Oops, crap. I clicked the wrong thing. What I want to do is... Do we like the sun there, or do we want the sun to, like, fuck off over there? First off, we need to get rid of that effect, too. I don't like that like I thought I would. Oh, that's neat. Let's, uh... Let's take a screenshot of that. I mean, I, I like how, uh, rough and, uh, I guess painted it looked like. What was that? Oh, the Sentinels. How do I make launch fuel? Alright, 
so we're out of gas we are out of gas that thing cannot take off so I need to get more of that dihydrogen over here that I mentioned was useful for fuel and we need to break more rocks so we can get ferrite dust for metal plates I mean, kind of hard to go where we have to go if we can't get the ship in the air. Oh, I need a, I need an advanced laser for those. Oh, hey, I can scan those now and figure out what the secondary element is now. And I get those units. Ammonia. <sighs> So get a metal plate, get some starship fuel, and we can get this thing in the air again. Where were we going? Are you not going to tell me where I'm going because I have to worry about fuel? Oh, that was so close, I could have just walked over here, done the thing, and went back to the ship without wasting fuel. Because now we just burned a bunch of fuel launching. Quick time check here. I need to, uh... Hang on, I'm getting more and more stupid spam, like, text messages today than normal. That is, that is annoying as all fucking hell. Alright, cipher signal. Well, we're not leaving yet. We have to learn about base building. For some reason, I felt like base building was later on down the road. We're going to pop in the ship. Save. Go to mode select. Yeah, spam stinks. Base building, it's kind of boring. You have, you have to sink a lot of time into doing, uh, you have to research all the stuff to do, like, cool bases. Like, they're going to basically teach us how to make a glorified little wooden hut with four walls and a roof. Like, it takes, like, getting, uh, nanites and purchasing blueprints and... Like, it it takes a little bit of work to make something like the base I had going on at my place. But if you are interested in playing, and you get this game, I have reserved all three of these stacks of activated indium for you. That should be worth like 18 million dollars to get you like whatever ship you wanted if you decided to get the game and play with me. But no pressure to uh, get the game and play with me. I'm just saying I make so much money that I have a... Uh... No, I've got no problem giving you 18 million dollars worth of stuff. I've got 333 million dollars in my bank right now. And I have all that money because the point was... Now, let me aim for this uh, space station, and I'll teleport to where I walk to where I get that at. But like, I already have way more money than I ever realistically will need. Like, I can buy anything I want 
many times over. I can get any ship I want. Like, if I see a ship, whether I fly it or not, I'm just like, oh, that looks cool, I'm gonna buy it. Like this weird-looking yellow needle-shaped ship I have on my freighter. So it's absolutely no problem for me to throw $20 million at somebody just to do it. Like, watch the Like, here's how little I care about it. Like, I am fixing to go grab some of that money. Because tomorrow I'll have made what I've got, like... I'll have made what I got, like, five times over by tomorrow. That is a very small fraction of the money, but... Like, I get so much money, and this is how little I care that... Watch this. I'm going to go collect the- I'm going to go collect my activated indium real fast. Am I in range of the ship? Yeah. Quick transfer this to my inventory. I'm going to pop back out. Summon the space anomaly. Yeah, Space Anomaly is the, uh, multiplayer. It, like, if you want to... You can come here, you can buy stuff. It's, uh, with in-game currency and get, like, research that's hard to find and stuff. And there are also other players here. Like, this is, like... If you want to see people that aren't in your party, like, this is your, like, one chance to see them. What am I stuck on? See, watch this. We'll just, uh... Quick transport. Let's see. Like, this... I've got so much money. I don't care. We're gonna pick three random people. And they've each made, like, six million bucks. And here soon, I am going to have even more than that. Like, I, yeah, I, I completely rigged up my system to where in a day, half a day, like whenever I feel like playing, I've got 28 million dollars worth of activated indium that I can just go collect and then resell at a space station to make big profits. That's how I got my really big, really expensive uh, freighter, the Queen of the Night over there that was so like, it was like a quarter billion dollars or something. I got that because I set up the infrastructure to just spam a rare resource, mining it, and make profit. So... I mean, I, I did this, I just got that money like an hour ago, so there's not going to be a whole lot in my refiners right now. But if we go to a... Uh, Indium Extraction Outpost Alpha over here. I can, I can go get some amount of more. Yeah, it's been about an hour and a half since I got the uh, stuff because I, I picked it up while I was streaming the first time alright All right, so we don't have much we've only got like a million dollars worth of activated indium right now but the point is at this particular extraction outpost and I made two at this particular one I've already got a million dollars I can just go pick up in resources I can sell. <laughs> yeah, on only a million, like... that That's how much I've played the save, and that's how badly I wanted... 
this really big, nice, expensive freighter I've got that... Don't get me wrong, it, it, it took a lot of work to make this much passive income. I think I spent like four days grinding out resources to set up bases and set up the mining stuff. And those really rare elements like this activated indium are only on like very specific like rare hazardous uh, planets. Like oh there's almost two million right there. Like this is a very dangerous planet to be on. Like right now it's fine but when there are storms like your hazard suit's gone in like 30 seconds. So like you have to find... I had to put work into finding pretty specific planets that even had activated indium. Then I had to spend several days grinding to set up the infrastructure so it took a lot of work but I'm proud of my uh, passive income here and that I but like I said, you know, only a million. I have. Th I don't mean to like, like, like humble brag. I'm proud of like all I've got, but I've got a lot of infrastructure set up now to support this. Like I am quite well off. I need to see if there's a change why they can't warp my freighter here. Like, I know it doesn't have fuel in it because I don't really use the freighter to travel but I feel like I used to be able to teleport it just wherever and now it's like I can't get it out of the system so yeah that, that that's how much money I make like if you if you get the game and we play the game together and I show you how the game works and you get used to it like I've set up my infrastructure. I really, really, really don't care if I give you $30 million worth of my activated indium. Because I have way more than I need. <sighs> We're going to go back to my main system so I can get to my freighter. Since I clearly can't teleport it for whatever reason. I've never played Animal Crossing, so I don't know what you're referring to, to be honest. See, is my freighter in this system? I mean, it, it, well, I, that's a stupid question. My, of course my freighter's in this system. I can't move my freighter, so... We just have to go figure out where I parked it. Where did I park? <laughs> this is how big my freighter is. We can see it from so far away, like... Mind you, I'm going like three kilometers a second right now. Now I'm going way faster than that. That's how big my ship is. I can see it halfway across the system. I do need to park and where's me and the um oh here it is I try and keep any uh valuables I have on the freighter not my inventory uh, one, it takes up space, and two, there's a chance when you're out flying in smaller ships that raiders are going to be like, Oh, hey, you've got a lot of cargo on you. We're going to fight you. And it's not that it's a problem for me. This ship is good enough I can take them. It, 
it's just more the inconvenience of it, so... They don't mess with freighters. I, on the other hand, love to mess with freighters. There's good profits to be made if you raid other people's freighters. Lawman will come after us, though. Uh, platinum, I don't want platinum. Magnetized ferrites, useless chromatic metal. What's in here? Oh yeah, somebody hates me now. Where the ships go? Yeah, we can space fight folks too and steal their shit and... Now I got the lawman spaceships on our ass, so... Uh... Whoa, whoa, I just bounced off that uh, thing I was blowing up. What we really need is, uh... I don't know, I just have it in my head, James May from Top Gear. Crikey, it's the Rosser! Like... Uh... We just need to like insert that little sound clip here and we'll be perfect. And because game logic, how the game works, for some reason going right into your ship clears your wanted level, makes you safe. So I guess the law is not gonna freeze my ship and force a search of it, so Oh yeah, they hate me a lot less too, by the way, because I just plundered like that whole race hates me significantly. Because I just spent a couple minutes plundering all their shit. What kind of ship you got there, buddy? I mean, it is a kind of neat looking ship, but it's a kind of crappy ship. Space station, space station, space station. I'm in the market for a new ship, I feel like. Let's see if any cool ones fly into the space station, and then we're just gonna buy them off whoever shows up. I guess they knew I was coming to buy their ships off them for no reason because all four of them flew off in sync. This is a favorite pastime of mine. It's kind of boring, but I just sit and wait. Eventually a ship will come in, and if it looks cool, I'll buy it. I've got so much money I don't care. Well, I am gonna go see what the uh... Oh, we have ships coming in right now. What we got there? B class, 18 slots, million bucks, I don't want it. 18 plus 5, also a million. What are you?
This one is actually really neat. It kind of looks like a bug to me. Actually, so did these ones, but this one I kind of like. You know what? It's not even a good ship. I just want it. No, I don't want to exchange my ship. I just want to buy it outright. Are you not going to let me just buy your ship outright? No. I feel like I should have slots in my, uh... <clears throat> So how's multiple? No, it's it's the same thing. Like, like I'm I'm playing it single player right now. You can go, you can play it offline. You just can't like upload discoveries or stuff. But like, if you had the game, for instance, and we were friends on Steam or the other way around, when you go to the main menu, you're well. Here, we'll get out, let the game save. We'll, we'll go to mode select, but when you go to the main menu, multiplayer, if I, if I had a Steam friend that was playing right now, it would say, hey, there's sessions available. So, I would click it, and then I pick the save I want to load into. Like, right then, I just clicked that I was going to host it myself, but... If anyone was playing that was friends with me on Steam, you just click on their name, pick the save you want to load, like here's the start off one we did for half an hour, here's the one I play all the time, and then you just pop right into the game. Yeah, you could visit my bases and stuff. Actually, if you, fa if you found them out exploring on your own, you could visit my base. Statistically, you're not likely to find it on your own, really. You'd have to join into my game when I was in the area, because it would plop you down right where I'm at. But you would be able to check out my base. You can only have one player freighter in a system at one time, but if you wanted to land on my freighter... You can't fly my ships, but if you wanted to land on my freighter and look at the stuff, if I summon it into the system I'm in, you can land on my freighter and look at my stuff. And, like, if you're on the freighter and I fast travel with the uh, warp drive to a different system, you're going to follow me on the freighter and stay on board with me so we can totally travel together and do stuff. That's actually one of my favorite things to do, is to uh, play multiplayer with one of my friends. And if we... Uh, if we reload the world and wait for the world to load, I'm probably not going to play it a whole lot longer. It's coming on 12.30. I did say I have so something to do at 1, but I am going to pull up the galaxy map again really fast. Oh, I pop in my weird little yellow looking thing. Pull up the galaxy map. Like all all these named systems with circles around them are stuff that me and one of my buddies has discovered. Oh that's somewhere I have to be for a quest. But like this is I've played this save for like eighty something hours. And, like, even over here, you can see it's trying to trace out lines to where other stuff is. So there is a lot you can explore and do. A lot of the stuff I've done with friends, too, so... Like, when I'm in the system... Like, it says down here, if I zoom in, it shows the name of the uh, system I'm pointed at, and that so it says Salty Snail there. Because that system my base is on was actually discovered by one of my friends, not by me. So... Uh, somebody I completely don't know has apparently visited that planet. Because it is, it is possible, like, 
you do sometimes run into other people have if they're if they haven't set up a base at least they've visited traveling like it, it doesn't happen like every single jump you do but sometimes you run into a line somebody followed through but yeah, it's totally fun to play it multiplayer I want to return to my ship really fast it won't let me jump quicker because I'm so close that if I jump I'm crashing into my ship apparently that's an unsafe trajectory to do a pulse jump okay, I guess it wasn't far I'm just impatient I'll, I'll pulse jump a flight that takes 30 seconds to get somewhere just because I want to do it in two seconds oh, Weird little lighting glitch there. Actually, I am going to take my ship. I think the last thing I feel like doing... I realized when I went to use it that I don't actually have a teleporter on my main base. So I want to figure out what I need to set up a teleporter for this last 20 minutes or so. Well, that gives you a chance to look at base building options since I skipped out on the wooden shack. Now that we're here, oh, here we go. Structures, attack. This is using up on the D-pad if you end up playing this game with like an Xbox controller. If you mouse and keyboard it, I don't know how to tell you get into this uh, menu. Because I think it's weird to play flying games with a mouse and keyboard and I just refuse. Alright, that's not too bad. We just need metal plating. Alright, I don't have metal plating, carbon nanotubes. So we're going to need like 200 ferrite dust and about 100 carbon it looks like. But I really want to link up this base with the teleporter. Or I mean, I guess it is linked up. I can t I can teleport to the base. I just can't teleport out of the base. I have to fly up into space and go to the space station. The little, r I don't know if you caught that. The little red, uh paw print icon that popped up on the map and was tracking where that thing was means that thing was not friendly and it would have attacked me first so I just killed it much ferrite dust do I have just over a hundred I need more I need more. Oh, here's another kind of cool thing if you're looking, Katie. This thing right here that I just activated is called a Knowledge Stone. Like each time you get one, you learn one word to the language of the race who uh, is the predominant species in this system. 
So, like, if I go up to the space station and I talk to an alien, like, a lot of the char- a lot of the words will be just random characters, broken nonsense, interspersed with, like, real words from me picking up knowledge stones. But the thing that kind of makes it interesting is you don't just magically know the language of all these different alien species you run into. You have to learn the words somehow with those knowledge stones. So, it, it can make it interesting, like, I mean, when you're trading, you're trading. You can trade, no problem. But if you're, like, talking to somebody, he's trying to ask a favor, and you might not even know what he fucking wants and get the answer wrong and upset the guy, because you just... Oh. <laughs> that wasn't a rock. That was interesting. Alright, so where's my, uh... I need carbon, too. Or, oh, I have exactly, so I can make, uh, I need four of those. I need enough carbon for two carbon nanotubes, and what else did it say I need? I need a bunch of sodium. I need the tree, whoop. Give me the tree. I feel kind of bad I'm defacing the plants around my base. I kind of like the plants here. Ooh, big tree. Hopefully that's a lot of carbon. There we go, there we go, there we go. Yeah. Little pro tip, the uh, top right corner where it says the yeah, little heat bar as I use this. The hotter you run this thing, the faster it mines stuff out. So I'll just like hold it, switch it over to here, and then you know, it's starting to get hot, it's starting to get hot. It's turning red, so I'll just let off just slightly, and I deliberately keep it hot, and it goes way faster. Alright, I, I totally overdid it. We have way more than enough uh, for carbon nanotubes now. We only needed like two of them. Sodium, sodium, sodium nitrate. We just have to go find sodium. I, don't, I, I just don't have sodium on me. I don't even think I need a whole lot of sodium. I think it was like a really small amount. Yeah, I only need 40, so... That's not too bad. Just need a couple of those. Ooh, another knowledge stone. And the Corvax word for process. Sodium. Sodium. you. Sodium rich plant. Fuck you Venus flytrap looking thingy. How much sodium do I have? 28. Honestly this is what half the game ends up being like yeah, I really like the bubbles, too. This is actually the first planet of this kind that I've seen. What is that? 
It's like a flying little mushroom looking jellyfish thing. No, it possesses language, huh? That is really cool. Yeah, this is a really neat planet. It's the only one of this kind that I've seen. Because, you know, like I was saying, you know, 99% of, like, what you do, eventually you're going to feel like you've started to see it all. But every once in a while, you do find something really cool that totally makes up for it, like... Like this planet, for instance. Where it's got the, uh... Cool looking grass, the interesting trees, the weird little bubbles popping up. Actually, uh. What am I looking for? I'm looking for the, uh. And yeah, it's, it's like 1.40 in the morning for the time on this world, so eventually it'll be daytime. Well, this place looks kind of cooler in the day, I think, or just here at a bad time. What's that, sodium? Yeah, that's so. The yellow things are sodium. Oh. Oh, I have 66 sodium. I don't need to keep getting it. Yeah, it, it is. It's a very... A very cool place. Oh, hey, another knowledge zone. I don't need sodium, but I will detour to grab that. I like learning words. I'd eventually be able... I would like to eventually be able to not read gibberish when the natives around here talk to me. No, I want to sprint. I don't want to scan. I learned the Corvax word for we. Didn't realize I got so far from the base. This is how great my suit is by comparison to the other one. <laughs> On the new save, like, we've been running around forever and I just hit life support 50%. And I was afraid to run fast with the other guy because the suit would run out quick. Uh, let's see, how are my batteries doing? Time until drained, nine minutes. Okay. Oh, we've only got three three minutes of darkness remaining, though, so. I said double check before I put a big teleporter in here because I'm still setting this place up so I don't quite have all of the infrastructure I need. We'll do that. Power. Whoops, wrong button. We need wiring to go from there to there. Is the section not hooked up to power? So let's go power from there to there. This is going to look really stupid, but I really... Oh. No, open my door! What you lock me out for? I have a side door somewhere. That's obnoxious. I'm totally locked into my own building. Uh, that's what side doors are for. Let's see. I 
guess what we need to do is it looks like we should probably start linking up power to there we go I, I found what I needed to find to link this up now I can teleport out of my base and I don't have to fly up to the space station and now we can look at it in daytime like we like the water's got this like almost kool-aid color here like it's got that red uh, I, I, I don't quite know how to describe it like it's got this almost I want to say a luminescent vibe to it the grass and the right lighting when it's not like shadowed by a cloud or whatever and then you see the uh the trees are purple and they look really cool in direct sunlight too. This is a really nice looking planet. And that's why I live here and not on the crap hole planet where my Indian farms are at. Mainly because I would die setting up the infrastructure for as much outside time as I need. Oh, uh, 1245, it's looking like it's about that time. I should probably get off the game here. Ugh. Yeah, it was fun. I hope you, uh, I hope you liked it and you're interested in it. Like... And if you're not interested, it was fun about it was fun to play it for the first time in a while anyway. So even if you weren't interested in it, I had fun playing it for two hours. So I guess I'm just gonna end the stream because I'm like I don't I don't have a big network of people where I'm like, hey, let's go raid these people for fun. I don't have a big network like that, so I'm just gonna. That's when I'm gonna end the game. End the stream, sorry. Unless you wanna watch a British guy race cars around. Yeah, I guess I don't have to. Actually, I almost never do. I like, ooh! I'm ending a stream and you're doing a stream, or I'm ending a stream and Peach is like, alright, fuck off, stream's over, get out of here, guys, I'm watching somebody. And I've done that before. I've been like midstream. Hey, my favorite person. This was actually you in this case. I'm not saying this just to flatter you or whatever. But I was actually like, ooh, my favorite person, Grouchy Eskimo, is just starting a stream. Get out of here, guys. Stream's over. I'm going to go watch her. Like, I've actually done that, so. <laughs> like, streaming's fun. When I really want to do it, I like to do it. But I would rather watch other people stream than do my own streams. Like, I mean, I'm not saying I don't want to stream. I'm saying I just have more fun watching streams is what I'm saying. So, yeah, I totally have, like, I looked at my phone because the Twitch app's like, hey, so and so streaming. And it's like, alright, you guys, fuck off. It was fun. I'm out. Right, but seriously, I've got like 15, I've got like 15 minutes to change out of my uh, hoodie t-shirt thingy and do something else. So it was nice of you to finally pop in, watch a stream. But I've got things to do, so I'm getting out of here. So see you later.